Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the general ledger, otherwise known as the T account. We're going to be looking at what it is and why we do it. We're also going to go through some examples on how to record accounts in the general ledger and also how to close off accounts or how to balance off the accounts. In our previous lesson, we looked at what the general journal is. We also looked at how to do transactions in the general journal. And we also did another lesson where we explained how to easily remember your debits and credits or a tip to remember your debits and credits. It's a very short lesson, but it's extremely helpful for most students. So if you'd like to check those, check those ones out, you'll find the links in the description below, or you can click on the link on the top right of the screen to check them out. Otherwise, what is a general ledger? Well, a general ledger takes the transactions recorded in the general journal and sorts them per account. Remember when we did the general journal or when we do the general journal, we're doing transactions as they take place. So we're not doing it for a specific account. We're just doing them as they take place. We look for, we ask ourselves what accounts are involved here and we record those accounts and we record their amounts. But when we come to the general ledger, it's for, it's for specific accounts. For instance, when we do transactions for a vehicle, for instance, when we come to the general ledger, we'll record it in the vehicle's account alone. So we'll be able to see all the transactions pertaining to a particular account. And that is why we do the general ledger. The ledger provides the movements and current balance in each of the accounts over the accounting period. So when you see a general ledger for any of the accounts, like for bank, you'll be able to see the movements in the bank account during the period as well as what the current balance is and that is what closing off the account means where, where you are able to see what the current balance is so let's get right into this example now these are the examples that we did in our previous in our previous lesson when we looked at the general journal like i mentioned before so if you'd like to check that one out you can click in the link in the description below as mentioned but here we were told that the owner deposited fifty thousand rand into the business we knew that we had to do the general journal. So we debited bank and we credited capital. And then we credited them with their amounts, 50,000 rand. And then we also, obviously we started to do the date and then their accounts and then their amounts. And that is what you do when you do the general journal. Now, if you are given something like this, if you're given the owner deposits 50,000 rand in the business and then you're asked to do the general ledger or the T account, or you are given the general journal like we have here and you're asked to do the T accounts or the general ledger, here's how you go about doing it. And how does a general ledger look? Well, let's look at an example. So we're going to do for bank and we're also going to do the general ledger for capital. Well, we look at the bank account general ledger. So you'll see here, you draw the T account and that's why it's called the T account because it's like a T. And then you write the name of the account on top. So here we wrote bank account. You can just write bank as well. And then you put your debit and your credit. Your debit goes on the left hand side and your credit goes on to the right hand side. That will never change. That should always be the case. Debit on the left, credit on the right. And then the question comes, what do you debit and what do you credit? Well, we're talking about bank here. So we are preparing the T account for bank and capital. And we can see here from our general journal, we debited bank with 50,000 rand. And like I said, if you check out that lesson where we show you tips on how to remember what to debit and what to credit, it should help you greatly in completing any general ledger account. But anyway, a bank is an asset, it's debited. Capital is part of equity, it's equity, so it's credited. So that's why we did the debit and the credit. And then here, when we're doing the bank account, we want to deal with the bank only. So what happened with the bank account here? Well. There was, an, there's a, there was an amount of 50,000 rand coming in to the bank account. So we're going to record it. And which side are we going to record it? We're going to record it on the debit side. That means on the left-hand side of the T account because it's money coming in to the bank account. So we're going to put the date there and to put the 50,000 rand. Now, the second question comes. Someone might ask when they are looking at this T account, where did this 50,000 rand come from? Or why is this 50,000 rand in the bank account? How did it get there? And that is why we have the description or the details which we have to put in here. And what is the detail when we're doing the general ledger? The detail is the contra account or the opposite account. Remember here when we, 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 we had the owner deposit money into the business account, there are always two accounts involved. So the first one was bank because there was money coming into the bank. And the second one was capital. The owner was investing in the business. So that is the opposite account for bank. So that's what we're going to put here. 
going to put capital and another way to think about it, about this is you ask yourself we have a 50, we have an amount of 50000 rand in the bank account how did that money come there where did it come from why did why do we have that money well it was capital investment by the owner and that is what we put here as the description so you're just explaining why uh, that amount arrived there or why that amount is there and that is basically what the details or the description is now let's look at capital what are we going to do with capital well we're going to do the exact same thing we did for bank so we're going to first draw the t account for capital and write capital on top there very important for you to name your accounts otherwise you'll be doing uh no one will know what this pertains to when you just leave the t account blank so you have to put the heading there so it's for capital and then what happened to the capital account well the owner invested money into the capital account so which side does capital increase well capital as part of equity increases on the credit side so we put the date first of january and that's what we were told here on the first of january and we put the fifty thousand rand so you can see we are doing the exact same thing that we did for bank and what is the description of the detail well if you are paying careful attention i said it's the contra account or the opposite account so what is the opposite account for capital it's a bank so that money was invested into the bank account so we put the bank and you can see here in fact one thing that you should remember not to do is if you have a heading here for instance for capital you can never have a description called capital again the heading cannot be the, the description for a transaction so pay careful attention to that i find students sometimes put the heading capital there and then here under description they also put capital that would be wrong or bank here and then in under the description they put bank again no you can't have the description which is the same as the heading or the account you are in so you have to remember that the description is going to be the contra account or the opposite account i hope it's making sense let's do another example you purchased inventory for seven thousand rand and it was paid for in cash you purchased inventory for uh, 7,000 rand, it was paid for in cash. We ask ourselves what are the two accounts, and you can see here, this is the general journal that we did previously. We did a number of them, so we're not going to go through all of them. So you can check out that lesson where we did them. So we have inventory and we have bank. Inventory is debited because inventory is coming in and inventory is an asset. And then bank is credited because money is going out of the bank account to buy the inventory. And bank is an asset, it decreases on the credit side. That's why we have bank of seven thousand rand on the credit side now let's do the t account for both bank and inventory now what i want to do is i want to bring back the bank account which we did previously remember this bank account which you did in the previous slide where we have uh where we invested when the where the owner invested fifty thousand rand into the bank account now i want to show you how you list all the transactions pertaining to a specific account and in this case it's bank account now what happened to the bank account well remember we purchased inventory for seven thousand rand so what happened to the bank account well money went down in the bank account money decreased because we had to pay to get that inventory and our bank was credited by seven thousand rand so we put it on the credit side we put the date third of january as you can see here in the uh, example we are told it's the third of january and we put seven thousand rand now the question is what is the description of the detail well i'm sure if you are paying attention you should get it correctly and if you guessed it's inventory you would be correct so we put there inventory of 7000 rand and that is how you do that one you can see general ledger is not complicated at all if you understand what your accounts are what your debits and your credits are and you will understand very well if you check those lessons out you should be able to do your t accounts very well now let's do for inventory we'll, this one is going to be a quick one because we know it's inventory here and then what happened to inventory inventory came into the business so we we'll put it on the debit side on the debit side sorry it's a typo here for the date supposed to be the third of january and what's the description it's the contra account or the opposite account it's the bank and then we put the seven thousand rand as the amount so you can see it's on the debit side because inventory came into the business and inven and that's an inventory is an asset it increases on the debit side and that is how you do the t account now let me let me ask you a question what if they told you you bought inventory on credit well the description here wouldn't be bank because you didn't buy it using cash or you didn't buy it by bank account you bought it on credit so here it was going to be creditors control or accounts payable so you can see how that changes depending on how you bought the inventory so that is why we have bank here because we're told we, were, we bought it using cash now let's look at the third example but in the third example here we are asked 
to balance off the bank account. So we are asked to balance off the bank account or the close of the bank account. How do we do it? Well, the first thing that you do when you're doing general ledger uh, balancing of accounts is to now check what the balances are on the debit side and what the balances are on the credit side. Now, how do you do that? Well, if you have a lot of amounts on the debit side or, or both on the debit and credit side, you calculate them and then you see which side is the bigger side. If the debit side is the bigger side, you're going to put the total of the bigger side on the debit side and on the credit side. I hope that has made sense. If the bigger side is the credit side, then you're going to put the total on both sides, the total of the bigger side on both sides. So let's look at this example here. We have 50,000 on the debit side and we have 7,000 on the credit side. Which side is bigger? The debit side is bigger. And how much is the debit? It's on the debit side. So since we know that the debit side is bigger, how much is it on the debit side? Well, it's 50,000 rand. So what are we going to do? We're going to put the total in both sides. We're going to put 50,000 on the debit side and 50,000 on the credit side. That's what I meant before. So if the bigger side is on the credit side, we're going to take that total for the credit side and put it on both sides. Now that you have done that, what do you need to do next? Well, you're going to say, since the credit side is the smaller side, by how much is it small? Or another way to ask this question is, how much do I need on the credit side to make it equal 50,000 rand as well? Well, we take the total 50,000 rand minus all the amounts which are on the credit side. And in this case, we only have one amount of 7,000 rand. And now what are we going to have? 43,000 rand. So we're going to put 43,000 rand on the credit side. So we put 43,000 rand. And then what do we call it? What's the description? It's called balance carried down. And that is always going to be the case. The smaller side, the balancing figure or the difference between what is on the smaller side and the total is what you call balance carried down. And you put it there on that smaller side. So you can see now our credit side equals our debit side because our credit side now is 7,000 plus the 43,000, which was the missing figure to make it equal what is on the debit side, which is the 50,000 rand. Now that you have the balance carried down, what do you need to do? Now you need to show where the amount is, where the balance is for the bank account. If the balance carried down is on the credit side, then the balance brought down or the balance is going to be on the debit side. So what do you do? You're going to take the 43,000 rand and put it on the debit side and you call it balance brought down. So B slash D, that's, what, that's how we usually write it in accounting in accounting or b slash d uh when we are balancing it off here so you can see this is how you balance off the account when you're asked to balance off the account you just compare the two sides which whichever side is bigger that total put it on both sides and then go to the smaller side and ask yourself what is missing on the smaller side to make it equal the 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 the, the, the amount on the on the on the opposite side that's what you're going to put as balance carried down and once you put that balance carried down you put it to the opposite again as balance brought down under the totals as balance brought down. What does this balance brought down mean? It means that we have a balance of 43,000 rand in the bank account after taking into account all the transactions that we had. We had money coming in, 50,000 rand, and we bought inventory of 7,000 rand. So 50,000 minus 7,000 equals 43,000 rand. So what are we saying in essence? When you look at the general ledger account, you can see here that our bank account is showing us an amount of 43,000 rand. So this is the amount that you're going to carry forward to the following month. Now, if you have a question here where you're given a trial balance or you're given amounts in, 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 in a table or you're given amounts somewhere saying these are the balances at the beginning of the period, what, what are you going to do? You're going to, like, you're going to write balance brought down and start with that one on the first of the month and write that amount that you were given. But here we didn't have that one here. So the balance brought down is used for opening balances as well as for closing balances. And here you can see it in closing balances. And then the balance carried down is only used to get the balancing figure to make the left hand side equal the right hand side or to make the right hand side equal the left hand side. I hope this lesson has made sense. I hope you know how to balance off the account and this and how I explained it made sense. And if you have gained value from this lesson, if you have learned something new, please consider subscribing to our channel, liking this video and sharing it to those you think it might help. Otherwise, if you have questions or any queries relating to this particular question, you can leave them in the comment section below. Till next time, cheers.